Okay, so we just solved this problem. We found the temperature of the sun basically by um, uh, finding the total power P sub T radiated by the sun by using the Stefan Boltzmann law and integrating over the area, the surface area of the sun. Okay, this, and then that's equal to the total power, uh, that same total power will pass through um, a, a sphere much bigger radius, um, basically a sphere that passes whose, whose surface uh, includes the Earth, and we basically plugged in the power per unit area that's detected on Earth. Okay, and when you equate those two things and solve for the temperature of the sun, you get something like 5,700 degrees Kelvin, which is um, pretty close to what I indicated before was basically roughly the temperature of the sun. Okay, so it um, it seems that we've that this all works out okay. Okay, so to recap, the Stefan Boltzmann law basically um, tells us that the that the uh, power radiated by a black body per unit area of the black body is proportional to the fourth power of the temperature. So first, this means that obviously that this the uh, the power per unit area is going to increase dramatically as you go to higher temperatures, and this again is basically related to the total power. So if you integrate it under each one of these curves, okay, and um, then and you compare uh, different temperature the curves compared uh, corresponding to different temperatures, then you would get um, you would find this this uh, relationship. Okay, now. Um, later on, in 1893, Wilhelm Wilhelm Wien from Germany um, basically used um, sort of modeled electromagnetic, I mean, modeled black body radi radiation with the radiation that would exist in a cavity, electromagnetic radiation, or electromagnet, yeah, that would exist in a cavity, and basically thinking of radiation as a, as waves. Uh, only certain waves waves will fit into the cavity, and we'll get into this a little bit more in a, in a, in a little bit. And so, using thermodynamic using um, thermodynamics, basically was able to predict that the temp that the uh, the maximum the wavelength corresponding to the maximum intensity of the black body spectrum. That is, these these wavelengths here. Okay. Um, is uh, is proportional to one over the temperature. So we don't have a temperature axis here. There's a wavelength axis, but each one of these corresponds to a different temperature. So if you plotted this maximum uh, this uh, wavelength that corresponds to the maximum value of the spectrum as a function of the temperature, then you should get uh, by Wien's law, you should see that that's inversely proportional to the temperature. Okay. So now we have two. Uh, two separate um, uh, theoretical descriptions. One basically just tells you how the total power is related to the temperature, and the other one tells you how the um, how this maximum, uh, the, the wavelength corresponding to the maximum um, power in this in the, in, in the black body spectrum uh, is related to temperature. But again, neither of them actually um, predict the shape of this curve precisely. Okay, so that's that's uh, what we're going to move on to now. Now, some of you may sort of wonder how a cavity can sort of be a good model for black body radiation. So here I've tried to kind of draw what's going on. So imagine you have a, a, a cavity, basically a box with a small hole in it. Okay, well if light enters this hole Okay, it will reflect off the walls until basically it gets completely absorbed. Okay, and there's very little chance that any that any light that comes into that hole will actually um, escape through that same hole. So a different light, a different ray, for example, this blue one, will again bounce around. But again, very little chance that it'll get out, especially if the hole's small enough. And since the light will bounce around for a while and and, and until it's absorbed. The, the radiation that's inside the cavity will basically be in thermal equilibrium. 